Good morning, my dear students. In the last module, we had discussed the concept of acceleration as what it is used in terms of average acceleration and instantaneous acceleration and how the velocity time curve gives us the acceleration. While the acceleration could be varying, there can be quite a number of cases now. Each problem can be defined by itself. And variation with varying velocities and varying accelerations are quite common in a mechanical motion. We now try to project our attention on a special case of a bodies which are moving along a straight line with constant acceleration. They are moving along a straight line with constant acceleration. When a body is moving with constant acceleration, it must be moving along a line like that, we say along a straight line. Rather, I would put it much more clearly, if a body is moving along a straight line with increasing velocity or decreasing velocity, it must be along a straight line. It is not true in the converse way. When you say the body is moving with constant acceleration, then it need not be along a straight line always. You must remember these things. Anyway, we will talk about a special case, constant acceleration along a straight line now. We have seen the velocity time curve also earlier, how it gives the acceleration. Let us project our attention a little more on the curve's graphical re representation. We get more information about it here. The name of our module is therefore, the title is Motion with Constant Acceleration. And we also add another thing here, acceleration of free fall we call it. What do you mean by this? We will know a bit later. First, we will know about the motion with constant acceleration cases. So, in this case, if you think of velocity time curve, we had said one thing in that module, we are talking about acceleration. When well, acceleration is constant, the velocity time graph will be a straight line, we said. So, we give the example of what we said there. Velocity, it's a straight line, suppose like this then it is a constant acceleration, definitely. What constant acceleration? It is such that the velocity is having the same magnitude throughout. You can see that. So, acceleration is constant in this case. What is constant value here? Velocity is not changing. Even that, also, that is also there. Velocity is at t is equal to 0 is some value V0x and is having the same velocity throughout. That means change in velocity is 0, delta v is 0. So, this constant acceleration what we say is constant all right, but 0 acceleration. Constant acceleration, but 0 there. That is what a straight line is, which is horizontal to parallel to the time axis there. Suppose you have an acceleration, which is constant, which is non-zero, which is not 0. Then, it will be like this we said, sloping up positive acceleration. Positive acceleration is velocity here, time here as usual. This is a slope which is positive here. Such a case tells you a case of constant acceleration, constantly increasing velocity, change in velocity is constant. We have also given another case, slightly different from this one, that is having the straight line starting from here like that. This is the velocity. So, at t is equal to 0, here the velocity also is equal to 0. In this case, it is not that. There is some velocity here. That velocity is there at this point. And with the time, it is increasing. And out some time, say, like this, out some t seconds here, say, the velocity has become some different value. It has changed now. So, it has become say V1 X or v, v T X or something like that we call it. Say. Velocity at the end of T. Then, the slope of the curve gives you acceleration we said. So, this is the slope of the curve. This is gives, this gives you acceleration. Slope means 
this by this that is theta so if you now see this what tan theta is here which is supposed to be giving you the acceleration a it is this length by this length that is you see the coordinates here it is vt x minus v0 x this difference divided by t t minus 0 or t you can call it this is what we have been telling earlier so this is the constant acceleration case this itself is what is called acceleration here there is acceleration there so this acceleration is given from this graph let us examine this graph a little more in detail now you will see something more in that this is v0 so what is this here it is also v0 v0x this is vtx we said and you can call it as simply vx also at any instant of time you can call it vx there and write instead of t you can simply leave the t and write t vx also for simplicity i can put like that also because easier to follow so what is this now this difference is that vx minus v0x that is what this distance is from here to here so that is what is called as the change in velocity here and now what is acceleration by definition it is change in velocity by time taken that's what the definition we give it here delta t is t itself change in velocity is vx minus v0x by t that's what is here now so this is vx minus v0x so from the equation what you see is vx minus v0x vx minus v0x is equal to a into t that means this part whatever is here is nothing but acceleration into time taken so from this equation you can write vx is equal to v0x plus ax into t if you take the other side here this is an interesting equation here this equation tells you that if you know the acceleration if you know the time and initial velocity here velocity at t is equal to 0 at any instant of time the instantaneous velocity can be known the instantaneous velocity can be known at any time provided you know when it started and where it started uh, with what velocity it started and what acceleration it is having there so this relation tells you connects between the velocity and acceleration and the time taken there so this is one equation this is known as e one equation of motion for a straight line when a body is moving along a straight line with constant acceleration one equation is here this will be this can be used i will put it here then you can see another interesting thing here in this curve velocity time graph suppose the body is moving with constant velocity that is acceleration is zero this is velocity vx time taken here so this is t this is zero what about this area just have a look on this here this area is the area of the rectangle here that area in that this is vx and this is t so area gives you vx into t that's what the area is that is the constant velocity into time taken that itself is what is known as the distance traveled displacement we call it so we know displacement is x you know velocity is nothing but displacement by time taken so this tells us that the area under the velocity time curve gives you the displacement there when you come to this case of constant velocity in acceleration here here acceleration is zero all right it is true even in the case of constant acceleration there so in that case what happens if you see if you understand that if you now try to count the area under this what you get you see here in the first equation itself what you got is v0x plus at is equal to vx 
straight away from the graph also you can understand that. In the second equation, in the second relation that we have to we derive here, similarly, you can see the area now. Suppose area under the graph. I put some name here, it's O here. I call some A, some B here, some C there. Some D here, suppose. Time is T from here to here. I call it as D there. Now see, when the body is moving with a constant acceleration like this, with an initial velocity V0x at T is equal to 0, what is the area under the curve telling us? The area under the curve always gives you, I told you, displacement, we call it displacement. Yes, we call it say. What do you mean by S here? S means x uh, minus x0, initial displacement, initial x coordinate, final x coordinate is x, initial x coordinate is 0, that is it. So x0 is at t is equal to 0, x is at t, that is displacement case, coordinate there. Now let us see what it means for us here. It is area we said. So x minus x0 is equal to what is the area under the curve? It is the area of triangle ABC plus, that means this triangle, plus this rectangle here, plus the area of the rectangle OACD. Now observe that area here. Area of the triangle is given by a base into half into altitude, half into altitude is BC here, plus area of the rectangle here is OA into OD, that is it. Now observe them, what we get here. We have just now shown that this BC is nothing but AX into T. So we can write this as half BC is AX into T. What is AC? It is equal to OD here, that is T only. So you can write T here. Plus OA. OA is V0X. Initial velocity. OD is time taken T. Now consolidate all this here. You will find that X minus X0 is equal to V0XT plus half AXT square. This is the second equation. So from the equation, from the graph, you got another equation also here. This equation tells you that if you know the time taken for any given period and this the velocity with which the body has started and the acceleration there, then you can find out the displacement where the body is at a given time. And that can be known from this equation. So that is second equation. We can write as x minus x0 is equal to v0xt plus half axt square. That is second equation. Then coming to third equation. Another equation also can be derived from this. You can see from the first equation, it connects the initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration time taken. Here, it connects the Initial velocity, displacement and time taken with acceleration. There is no final velocity here. So final velocity and initial velocity with uh, acceleration, there is the, this one equation only we have here. We don't have displacement and initial final velocity is involved there. We derive that equation now. You can write like this. Like this, we have got two equations of motion for a body moving with constant acceleration along a straight line. Now we go in for third equation also. Just from these two equations, we will be able to get third equation also. We can write those things from the very definites of what we know. Like, for example, when a body is moving with constant acceleration with increasing velocity like this, the velocity initially is lowest and the final it is the highest. And the average velocity will be in between the two. That average velocity is given like this. Average velocity is this V0x plus that Vx by 2. That is average velocity. If you remember, we have defined that average velocity as 
the net displacement by time taken. Average velocity we have defined as net displacement by time taken. That means x minus x0 net displacement time taken is t. So from this what we find is x minus x0 into t sorry x minus x0 is equal to average velocity into time taken. What is the average velocity now? V0, Vx minus v, Vx plus V0x by 2. That is the average velocity into time taken t. So, from this we can write Vx plus V0x is equal to 2 into x minus x0 by t. I just rewrite the same thing. Then, from the equation 1 again, see here, this is what we get from the definition of this one. Again, from equation 1, we can write Vx minus V0x, bring this this side, you are left with acceleration into time taken. Then, take the multiplication of the two things. Multiply these two equations now. If you multiply these two, what you get is, this is A plus B into A minus B like thing. So, you will get V x square minus V 0 x square equal to 2 into x minus x 0 by t here A x into t. So, then t gets cancelled here and you are left with the third equation what we want V 0 x square 2 A x into x minus x 0. The third equation. So, like this, there are three equations of motion now. So, when a body is moving along a straight line, we have got initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration, time taken, displacement, position of the body. All these things are involved in these equations. Depending upon the problem given, you can choose any equation that is convenient, one or more than that, and accordingly calculate the whatever is asked there further. So, these equations of motion are very important as for the understanding of moving to the bodies are concerned along a straight line. There is a special case of a body moving with the constant acceleration along a straight line. That is of great importance. When a body is left from a height freely like that, it will come to the ground. You know the ground will attract it. There is a force of attraction, gravitational force we call it. So, the body falls to the ground. When the body is falling to the ground, even though if you just leave it without giving any velocity, it goes on increasing its velocity as it comes down. That means there is acceleration on that. This acceleration is what is called as acceleration due to gravity. Acceleration due to gravity, we call it. The acceleration due to gravity is generally shown with the letter G and its value is taken as 9.8 meter per second square. This can be experimentally determined. We will be seeing all these things in future to come. So, the value of G is this. Accepted value, approved value is this on the surface of the earth. It changes from place to place anyway, but for all numerical problems from the present standpoint of this module, we can take it as 9.8 meters per second square. This acceleration makes the velocity of the body increase as it comes down. You leave a body like this freely from any point with initial velocity v0 x is equal to 0, it starts falling down with increasing velocity like that. It reaches the ground wherever it is. So, the velocity here will be different. This can be used in this like in this equation. We can write the equation as v x square minus v0 x square is equal to 2 instead of acceleration here. This acceleration is nothing but g now here. So, we can write as g into x minus x0, wherever it is, this is uh, some distance is called, I call it as h here, then I can write as h here. This x initial point to final point distance, this I call it as h there, so you can write h. There. So, the value of the equation is like this and here v0x becomes 0, so we can write as vx square is equal to 2gh. So, we can apply that equation with the value of g 
In the case of a freely falling body like that, we call this body is freely falling body. When a body is left to free, if you don't consider the air resistance at all anywhere, it is supposed to be falling freely with that acceleration. Generally air resistance will be there, but you are neglecting it here. So this acceleration due to gravity is constant on all bodies. Whatever body you drop, it falls to the ground with the same acceleration. It is the constant acceleration of that freely falling body, any body. It does not depend upon the mass of the body. It depends only on the gravity of the earth from where it is being accelerated down. So that's what it is. If your body, body is projected vertically upward, suppose, like that, then what happens? The body will go up like that. And as it goes up, its velocity goes on decreasing because g is vertically downwards. Velocity will be upwards. They are in opposite directions. So g must be considered negative there. And it goes on pulling the body down. Body wants to go up. Velocity goes on decreasing. And the body reaches some point where the velocity becomes zero. Until then, it goes on decreasing. After the velocity becomes zero, it has no other go. It must start falling down from there again, like freely falling body. So you have to apply, you can apply the sequence of motion for the motion of those bodies also which are falling freely and vertically projected. Then you will be able to answer the problems under the constant acceleration under gravity. Those problems can be done. But the only thing that you must remember is the value of g is constant in this case. If the body is moving along a straight line, the acceleration is not constant always necessarily. Whatever way the problem is given there, in that problem, whatever is given, it, you must take it. But if it is moving under gravity like this, the acceleration is always constant, given by the value g is equal to 9.8 meters per second square. Also, conventionally when we do it, we always take a sign to it. Acceleration is a vector quantity. When acceleration is a vector quantity, it must be given a direction. The sign must be there. So if you consider the direction, always upward direction is generally considered as positive direction. So downward direction is considered as negative with respect to that. So when a body is projected vertically upwards, it while going up or while coming down, the acceleration due to gravity is always downwards. So we always take it as minus 9.8 meters per second square. So that is what the acceleration due to gravity value is. You can apply this acceleration due to gravity for various cases of freely falling bodies and vertically projected bodies and we can do the numerical problems on that. I just give an example here to do it. Suppose a body is projected vertically upwards from the ground. How high will it go? What maximum height it will de describe here? We want to find out this value, suppose. It is starting with velocity here, v0x at t is equal to 0. Then finally it goes to maximum height, then velocity becomes equal to 0 there. Just like what I said now, we can write the equation as vx square minus, we can write vx, we apply the second, third equation now, try to put it here. So I write the equation vx square minus v0x square is equal to 2ax into x minus x0, the displacement. You apply in the special case here, the final velocity is becoming 0. Initial velocity is v0x square is equal to 2. Instead of g, we have got uh, g value here. When you put the value, we will see it. And the value is to be taken as minus because it is in the downward direction. And x minus x0, this displacement is what is h maximum, we call it, x maximum. So maximum height we call it as h, h maximum, suppose, it is given by v0x square by 2g, got the equation like that. So once you know the value of g and initial velocity, you can find out what height it will go maximum there. Similarly, you can find out uh, this is one equation we can derive. Similarly, time taken to go up, you can see. Time taken to go up. You can get from the first equation, that is Vx is equal to V0xt, V0x plus Axt. Now here, this is becoming 0. 
v zero x t is the time taken to go up the, to the maximum height there upward direction say suppose this is some t there I call it as t a call it as t of ascent time of ascent acceleration is g anyway to be taken with a minus sign because it is downward so then we have the time of ascent given by the equation v zero x by t by g so that gives you the time taken to go up there like that whatever we want to find out you can apply with those equations and you can try to find out you can apply and find out the uh, time taken from second equation also that we also will get the same answer there so you can try to find out like that and attempt numerical problems also given to you in the book some of the problems which are there already there in the book you can always uh, try to work out from uh, the module and then get to the understanding of these problems there thank you